tonight on WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. A family missing since Sunday is found. Uh, this community came together and, and helped us um, come to a successful conclusion. The county sheriff chokes up talking about the rescue that has brought two adults and four children home. And for most of us on Delmarva, didn't get much of any snow today, but the concern over icy roads is just beginning tonight. Yeah, skies have cleared. It's already below freezing in many areas, and it's going to be a cold, frosty night, and the rest of the week isn't looking a lot warmer. I'll have an update. Now, WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. Good evening, I'm Paul Butler. And I'm Alice Bavis. This is WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. Here's your 10 minutes of nonstop news and weather starting now. A couple and four young children are now safe and have reunited with family after being stranded in Nevada's frigid mountains for nearly 48 hours. Bigod Shaban reports. Cheers greeted the ambulance carrying the four young children and two adults who were rescued from the icy mountains of northern Nevada. <laughs> 200 people worked to find them after they failed to return home on Sunday. Ultimately, it was a family friend, Chris Montez, who spotted the group. It was a huge relief. <laughs> I was expecting the worst. And when I came around the corner, I counted all six of them standing there nice and warm. On Sunday, James Glanton and his girlfriend, Christina McEntee, took their two young children and niece and nephew to play in the snow near Lovelock, Nevada, about 100 miles northeast of Reno but their Jeep flipped over. They did have some food and they had water the whole time also, so it was just more the exposure to the cold. The family built a campfire near their car to avoid frostbite as temperatures dipped to 16 degrees below zero. Jay was heating up rocks in the fire and at night he was putting them in the Jeep with him. The group's safe return brought the town sheriff to tears. Um, it, it was the work of a lot of people um, in the community. Friends say the family never lost faith that someone would find them. All six are expected to make a full recovery. Love a happy ending. That was mm -hmm. Bigad Shaban reporting. Faint cell phone signal gave a cell phone forensics team enough information to narrow that search area to help find the family in Nevada. Well, cold and snowy weather has swept across the United States, especially areas surrounding Delmarva. Now, in D.C., most federal officers were closed today because of the weather. And both D.C. and Baltimore saw winter weather advisories earlier today. Over in New Jersey, how about there? Not much snow, but the roads were slick. And the hardest hit area, Philadelphia, saw a massive blanket of snow between four and six inches today. Now, clearly other places hit much harder than uh, most, but not. We're, but now, I should say, we're getting colder to deal with for the next few days. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Dan Satterfield, who says temps could drop into the teens. Yeah, by Friday morning, it's going to be that cold, Paul. Tonight, we'll drop into the mid-20s, and the ground is still wet, so we may very well see a heavy frost in the morning, and that means on your windshield, and yes, some slick spots on the roads, especially the bridges, and they're the kind of slick spots that are so isolated, you hit one before you know it. The rest of the road is dry. Nothing on radar out there. Clearing and colder tonight, a very cold day Thursday with highs only near freezing, and unfortunately, just as we warm up Friday and especially Saturday, into the upper 40s, the rain will move in. And if you're traveling north, it looks like more snow for them. We'll talk more weather coming up. Well, most of that white stuff missed Delmarva, but we did see quite a bit of rain. And as local highway officials on alert tonight as they watch the temperatures drop. Fox 21's Leanne Matlack is live tonight in Salisbury. Leanne crews are out tonight and they are on ice patrol. Alice and Paul, the storm went through Delmarva by about the afternoon, so most of the roads here are clear tonight. But there are a few puddles out there, and that has local highway officials worried about black ice, especially on bridges and overpasses. A few snowflakes Tuesday, but now the Maryland State Highway Administration is focused on the puddles the storm left behind. There's a chance, uh, and a, a pretty good chance, that they'll freeze over and they may encounter some slippery uh, con driving conditions. Christian Paso says come wintertime, he makes sure to pay extra attention when out on the roads. Well, you know, I take my son to daycare, it's always a concern. Um, but like I said, just being observant where you are and making sure you leave plenty of space in between, you know, you and the other cars. So. And he's vigilant because other drivers aren't. 
Yeah, you definitely have to be concerned. There's uh, people out there that aren't very careful. <laughs> Even if a roadway seems dry, the State Highway Administration is asking drivers to watch out and slow down. The key thing, though, know, even if they're in a dry, you know, dry road, uh, still have to look out for small spots where water naturally gathers because uh, it freezes very quickly. And that freeze happens quicker on bridges because there is no ground beneath them to keep the area warm. Uh, and those are being uh, salted throughout the day and will be continue to be monitored uh, throughout the evening. Keeping an eye on the roads, advice all drivers can take on Delmarva. Like Dan said, the temperatures the next few days are not going to be warm, probably below freezing point for most of the next few days, so it's important for all of us to be vigilant while out on the roads. Live in Wicomico County, Leanne Matlack, WBOC News at 10 on Fox 21. You know, soon you may see a new vehicle on the streets of Del Mar. The town recently got a new military Humvee to help with bad weather. The town acquired the vehicle through a federal program that gives unused military vehicles to local police departments. Now, this Humvee has an EMS stretcher installed in the back. Police redesigned the vehicle using a federal grant and $8,000 in seized drug money in Del Mar. Well, it's been two weeks since that deadly church fire in Ocean City, and now Shepherd's Crook, the connecting food and clothing pantry, has reopened in a new location. The center is calling this building on Worcester Street home for now. Lands End Fellowship is allowing Shepherd's Crook to use its facility until it gets a permanent building. Some people say they can't imagine Shepherd's Crook closing its doors. Neither can I. You know, as long as I have a breath in me, I will be serving Shepherd's Crook in any way that I can. Brenda Dingwall lost her husband, Reverend David Dingwall, in that fire. The crook relies on donations and support and is asking for donations for fire recovery costs in Ocean City. A Chrisfield business owner says he's facing a possible $500 fine and 90 days in jails for a flashing sign in his window. John Dyes, the owner of Crisfield Computers, says the city inspector told him that his flashing open sign in his window was a violation of city ordinance. Now, the sign can be eliminated, but not flashing. Store owners started a petition to change that ordinance and will present it to the city council tomorrow afternoon. Now, WBOC made several attempts to contact leaders from Crisfield, but phone calls and messages went unreturned. Making headlines tonight. Mourning and celebrating the life of Nelson Mandela continues in South Africa. A memorial service was held in a soccer stadium in the Johannesburg neighborhood of Soweto. Nearly 100 heads of state and government flew in for the service, including President Obama. Earlier today, Obama reflected on the impact Mandela had on his own life. And while I will always fall short of Madiba's example, he makes me want to be a better man. He speaks to what's best inside us. Also in attendance at the memorial service, former U.S. Presidents Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush, and Jimmy Carter. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was also at the service in South Africa. Arrests are made in North Carolina for the knockout game. The county sheriff says there were four victims in one night from the knockout game, which is when someone tries to knock someone out with one punch. Officers say they arrested five people in a knockout game case and charged them all with assault. There have been reports of the knockout game, of course, all over the country and right there in North Carolina. Virginia Governor Bob McDonald says he wants to spend nearly $40 million on mental health funding for the state. He asked for the increase in funding today, just weeks after Senator Cree Deed's son, Gus, killed himself and attacked his father. Gus had a mental health evaluation less than a day before that attack. McDonald says in addition to the money, he wants to create a task force to figure out the best way to prevent mental health crises in Virginia. Bipartisan House and Senate negotiators have introduced a new budget plan that would prevent another government shutdown in 2014. Now, House Budget Chairman Paul Ryan and Senate Budget Chairman Patty Murray announced the details of the plan earlier today. It's a two-year deal that would set federal spending levels and eliminate arbitrary forced spending cuts that would hit early next year. We have broken through the partisanship and the gridlock and reached a uh, bipartisan budget compromise that will prevent a government shutdown in January. 
All right, now that the plan has been introduced, it will face a vote in Congress. This plan devised by Ryan and Murray comes after several failed attempts at broader budget plans in Washington. Well, how about this for a trick to teach your dog? Yeah, ringing a bell to help raise money this holiday season. A German Shepherd in Wisconsin is doing just that. We'll introduce you to her next when WVOC News at 10 on Fox 21 continues after this.